Let's talk a minute about what Paul wrote in Romans 7.23 and Romans 8.2. Because in in Romans 7.5, he says, For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin or the influences of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. And then in Romans 7.23, he says, For I see another law, because he just got through talking about the law of Moses that Jehovah gave to Israel by Moses. He says, I see another law in my flesh, in my members, waging war against the law of my mind and bringing it into captivity to the law of sin that's in my flesh. And because we... And then then in Romans 8, 2, he says... For the law of life that is in the spirit of Christ Jesus may be free from that law of sin and death. I mean, it's just like uh, Romans 8, 8, where he says, So then those that are in the flesh cannot please God, but you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you, anyone has not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. And of Christ be in you, in, in verse uh, 10, he says, the body is dead because of sin, but our spirit is alive because of righteousness. Because we got to see that Rome, uh, 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty six, the sting of death is sin, but the strength of sin is the law. That's why he says in Romans 7, 5, for when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin which were by the law, did work in our mem- did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. That's why he's describing that I had not known sin but by the commandment, or that the sin the that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. That's why he's saying in Romans three twenty that no flesh should be made righteous by the works of the law for by the law is the knowledge of sin he's talking about the full discernment of sin the conscious awareness of sin for i had not known sin but by the commandment and that's the same same thing that he's talking about the knowledge of the truth that is in christ as jesus said in john the gospel of john fourteen six. for i am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the Father but by me. And so we need to see the the power of sin is the law. And it is the law of life that is in the Spirit of Christ Jesus that frees us from that law of sin that's in our flesh that the first man, Adam, sowed into our flesh. And as Jesus came and redeemed us back out from underneath that law or that, yeah, that law of sin that he sowed, the first man, Adam, sowed into our flesh. You know, so, I mean, we need to, this is the knowledge of the truth. This is the conscious awareness of the truth. To see the truth, as Jesus said in uh, John eight thirty. 1 and 32, that if you are truly my disciples, you remain in my word and my sayings. And if you do remain in my word, he says, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. I mean, if you're free, you're free. You're not partially free. You're free. And in uh, verse uh, 35, he says, A servant doesn't remain in the house forever, but a son does. Uh, The King James rendered that the son, but the Amplified correctly renders that a son because Jesus is making a contrast between a servant and a child. And Paul describes that in Galatians when, when, uh, let me, let me go to, uh, Let me go to that real quick. Uh, 
Because he says in chapter 4, verse 1, Now I say that an heir, as long as he is a child, differs nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. But as under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father, even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoptions of sons. And then even as the the apostle John in his first letter says, he says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Now. So we need to understand that whole the, the whole the whole truth behind that because as Jesus said, is the truth that's going to make us free. This is the truth that makes us free. And as Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 3, 7, some are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth, the full discernment of the truth. But the writer of Hebrews in ten twenty six says, For if we willfully sin after we've received the knowledge of the truth or we've come to the knowledge of the truth, he says there remains no more sacrifice for sin, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment. And then this comes back to what Jesus wrote or said that John wrote in uh, John 9, 39, 40, and 41. He says, For judgment am I come into the world, that they which see not may see, and that they which see may be made blind. And of the Pharisees that were with him said, Are we blind also? He says, if you were blind, you would have should have no sin. He says, but now you say we see, therefore your sin remains. I mean, and this goes back to what Paul said in Romans fourteen twenty three that whatsoever is not a faith of sin. I mean, and it has to do with God resisting the proud and giving His favor to the humble. I mean, you got to see the revelation of that in John 9, 39, 40, and 41, you know, and staying, you know, saying that we see when we don't see, you know, what how that impacts our life. And uh, I'm going to, I'm going to keep it short and, and you know, uh, food for thought to, to help people come into that. Amen.